What's up friends, Dan Vega here, and today is an exciting tutorial. This is something I have been waiting for for a little while now, but AWS recently announced that they now support the Java 17 runtime on AWS Lambda. This means that you can write your Lambda functions in Java, in Spring, and target JDK 17. This is a big deal because as you know, Spring Boot 3 depends on at least a baseline of Java 17, which means before we weren't able to use Spring Boot 3 to write our serverless functions, and now we can. So what I'm gonna do today is show you both sides of the coin, if you will. We'll create a new project using just Java. We'll create a new AWS Lambda function uh, in Java using the AWS Java Lambda core library. We'll send it off to AWS Lambda and see if that works with Java 17. Spoiler alert, it does. And then we'll create a new project in Spring Boot 3 using Spring Cloud Function. And again, we will create an artifact, send that over to AWS Lambda and use that there. So this is really exciting for me. Again, we're just kind of uh, able to use Java 17 now and that opens up some possibilities on both the Java and the Spring side. So what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and write some code. All right, the first example we're gonna look at is by creating just a simple Java application and we'll go ahead and use the AWS Core Lambda library. We've done this before on the channel, but again, we're just taking a look at how we can take advantage of Java 17 here. So I'm gonna create a new project here. Uh, I'm in IntelliJ IDEA. You can do this in whatever IDE or text editor you wanna use. So I'm creating a new project. I'm gonna call this Hello Java 17 and I'm gonna place this in my downloads folder. We'll create a Git repo. I will share both of these repos on GitHub and I'll leave them in the description below. We're creating a Java project and a Meva project. I'm using the Coretto 17 version of the JDK and we're gonna set a group ID to whatever your group ID is. Uh, mine is dev.danvega and we have hello Java 17. So once we go ahead and create that, I'll open this up in IntelliJ. All right, so we can see um, what I really like here is it set my Maven compiler source and target to Java 17, which is great. Um, and then we can go ahead and just add a quick dependency. So I'm gonna add a dependencies block, a dependency. This is going to come from AWS Lambda Java Core. And wow, that screwed all that up. Let's just try and fix that artifact group. I don't know what all this is, but that uh, is looking a little bit better. No. All right. So now that we have our dependency in place, uh, we can go ahead. Let's just refresh Maven here to say we want to caught up. And there we go. So now that we have everything in place, we can go ahead and start to write some code. So I'm gonna go into source main Java and what we're gonna do here is create a new Java class. I'm gonna call this simple handler. Again, this is just going to be a very simpler handler. Uh, we're just gonna be taking a look at how we can use Java 17 here. I'm going to check my project settings really quick and we're using Coretto 17 and uh, the language level, we'll just wanna set to 17. So we can go ahead and say, okay. And then we'll go ahead and implement the uh, request handler from AWS here. And we're going to take in a string and return a string. All right. Um, and then once we do that, we will need to create a method here. So let's say public, a string handle request. Uh, we are going to get the input and the context as arguments here. So context. And this allows us to do a couple things. One, I can use the context to get a logger if I want. So let's create a variable from that. Uh, now I have a Lambda logger. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and use that logger to log information out. And I am going to log the JDK version just so we can make sure we are running on 17. So I'm gonna say JDK version is equal to system.getProperty and we are going to ask for the, 
let's fix that. The Java dot version. And there we go. All right, so once we've logged it out, now we're going to return whatever we got uh, from the input, and we're just gonna turn it into uppercase. Again, a very simple example, but this is going to give us everything we need. All right, once we do this, um, let's go ahead and make sure Maven's up to date. Once we do this, now we need to build an artifact that we can go ahead and upload to AWS as a Lambda function. To do so, I'm gonna go back to my palm.xml, and what I need is the Maven Shade plugin. Again, I went in a little bit more detail on this in the first video, uh, building your first AWS Lambda uh, function using the AWS Java core library. So go ahead and take a look at that. I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. I have a little live template here. If you don't know what live templates are, if you go into IntelliJ, you can look at these live template things. And they're basically a way to create these code snippets. So you can just use a keyword and I'll put a bunch of code. And that way you don't have to watch me type this stuff out. So I have one called MSP, which is Maven Shade plugin. And that will go ahead and add this build plugin called the Maven Shade plugin. Again, I went into a little bit more detail on this. This is just a way for us to create something that is going to be compatible with AWS when we go ahead and upload our jar. So I saved that and now I am ready to create this artifact that we will upload to the AWS console. So how do we do that? Well, we come in here, we are using Maven. I'm going to say clean and package. And everything looks like it was okay. We have a build success. If we go into here, you will see that we have um, an original, but this hello Java 17 snapshot.jar is exactly what we need to go ahead and upload to uh, AWS Lambda. So let's do that. I'm going to head over to the AWS console and we will upload this. All right, so here I am in the AWS console under Lambda. I'm going to create a new function and we're just going to author one from scratch. Uh, so we're going to give it a function name. We'll say hello Java 17. We're going to choose our runtime. Here's where the exciting stuff happens. We can now choose Java 17 uh, from the runtime selection. Before uh, that wasn't there, and now we can go ahead and select it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep this on x86 uh, because if you want to use something like Snap Start, you'll need to use x86. It currently doesn't support ARM64, so I leave it on that. Uh, with that, you can go ahead and create the function. Again, this is going to take the input and just return the uppercase version of that. Uh, so we'll want to test this out, but we'll need to do a couple things. We'll need to upload the jar file that we created, and we'll need to modify some settings. So first I'm going to say upload from zip or jar. I'm going to choose upload, and I'm, I'm going to find this in on my computer here. All right, so we're going to go into the target folder, and I'm going to choose that snapshot.jar. And we'll go ahead and save that. Once that's up, we'll have to go ahead and edit the runtime settings. So we'll need to provide the handler. So this is going to be our package. So I'm going to say dev.danvega. And then you need, uh, let's just head over to the project and check this out. Um, so I have source main Java. Oh, I did not put a package in here. Hmm. So dev.danvega. And we'll just call this. Hello, Java 17. So once that's in there, let me refactor this. Um, we're going to have to go ahead and rebuild this as well, but that's okay. This should take no time. Maven clean package. We're going to have to say, um, hello, Java 17. And then this is going to be the simple handler class. And we are going to use the method handle request. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to have to upload a new version because we kind of changed some things there. But again, just going to pick that and save it. And we'll check our edit. Looks good. And now we should be able to go ahead and test this. So let's test this out. We're going to create a new string. Let's just say. Uh, hello, J17. 
Java 17. And again, what this is going to do is take this and turn this into an uppercase. Nothing exciting, but it is going to prove something. And if this works, we should see um, an output from the logger that we used uh, from the AWS Core Lambda library um, that prints out the JDK version. So let's go ahead and test this. Looks like it worked. Uh, click on details. We see that we have our Hello Java 17 returned in uppercase. And we see we have a log version here, or we have a log here. So JDK version is 17.0.6. That's the version that we're using here. So cool. Everything is working. We were able to create a simple AWS Lambda using Java 17. Exciting stuff. I know it's not you know life changing here, but we get to take advantage of all the things from Java 11 to, 11 to Java 17, and we can now select this as a runtime on AWS Lambda. All right, with that simple Java example out of the way, let's take a look at how we could do this in something like Spring Boot. All right, we are going to create a new project over at start.spring.io. I'm going to use uh, Java, I'm going to use Maven. I'm also going to downgrade a little here. I wanna be on 3.0.7 just because 3.1.0 doesn't kind of support all of uh, the release train just yet. So I'm gonna use that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out as dev.danvega and we'll call this Spring Cloud Function 17. And we are going to use Java 17. Now remember, we are using Spring Boot 3, so we baselined on Java 17. We couldn't do this before because Spring Boot 3 uh, needed Java 17 and it wasn't available on AWS Lambda and now it is. So we're gonna pick a couple dependencies here. I'm gonna choose web. I'm also going to choose Spring Cloud function, uh, function, there we go. And that will give us everything we need. So we can go ahead and generate a new project, download that zip, and I'll go ahead and open this up in IntelliJ IDEA. All right, I'm going to go ahead and refactor this, rename this to application, that is okay. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create just a simple function. We've done this before on the channel. The whole point of this is not to really cover that. It's really talking about the support for Java 17. So I'm gonna create a very simple example. We'll create a bean here, and this is going to be a public function that is going to take a string and return a string and we're just going to call this reverse and then we will return the input which is the s and we'll say string dot value of and we'll take in the new string builder and that will take in our string and then we'll just reverse that so that is all we need to get started. We have a beam. Now we need to do uh, a couple things. We need to head into our palm.xml. Let's see what we got here. Again, we are using 3.0.7. We are using Java 17. And we have Spring Boot Starter Web, Spring Cloud Function Web. We'll need another dependency here for AWS because, again, part of the really exciting stuff with Spring Cloud Function is we are writing our functions in a ag platform agnostic way, right? We can go ahead and deploy this anywhere, but our target for today is going to be AWS. So I'm going to say dependency. We are going to add an artifact ID of Spring Cloud Function. We need the adapter, which is AWS. And that is going to not be pulled in. What's going on here, Dan? Uh, we'll need that from org.springframework.cloud, I believe. So let's go ahead and see if that pulls that in. Looks good, okay. We have our cloud, our dependency management for Spring Framework Cloud. Now, with that in, we'll need one more thing. We have this build plugin for the Spring Boot Maven plugin. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need that now. I have another live template for my Spring Boot Maven Shade plugin. So uh, we have Maven Deploy, Spring Boot Maven plugin. So we don't need this. Again, this is something we covered in the first video. This is just going to allow us to 
uh, create an AWS uh, artifact using that Maven Shade plugin. So with everything in place, I should be able to come over here to my terminal and say Maven clean package. And let's see what happens. All right, build success. That's a good start. Let's see what we have in here. Um, we have a couple jars, a few jars, that's good. So we are interested in this one in particular, the snapshot dash aws.jar. That is what we are going to upload to Amazon. So let's head over to the AWS console and do that. All right, so here I am in my functions section of the AWS console. I'm gonna create a new function. We're gonna author from scratch. We'll say that this is Spring Cloud, Spring Cloud function reverse. And we're going to select Java 17 as the runtime. Yay! X86, because again, we'll probably take advantage of snap start here. And once we have all that in place, we'll go ahead and hit create function. All right, from there, we're gonna go ahead and upload our zip or jar file. We'll go into the target folder and find that AWS specific jar, and we will go ahead and save. Just a quick side note, I do have a website here, danvega.dev. This is the original AWS Lambda snap start for Spring developers. If you wanna check out that video or this blog article, I actually came over here because I need to copy something. Again, we built out the same reverse function, but what I need down here is we have to set our handler to a specific, um, value here and I'm wanna, I wanted to go ahead and copy this. So once I have that, I can come back over here and we're gonna click edit and we're just gonna fill in this handler as the one that I have in the blog post there. So go ahead and select that and click save. With that, I should be able to test this out now. So I'm going to go to test and what I want us to do is test this and then also pay attention to the startup time. So let's go ahead and say, uh, let's give it a hello Java 17 string and let's go ahead and click test. And we'll see that this is going to take a few seconds, but it did work. So if we go into details, we see that it reversed that string. You'll see the init duration uh, of almost four seconds, a little over three seconds. Um, the duration, the build duration, et cetera. Here are some logs. So if we go ahead and test that again, you'll see that it runs very fast. And again, this is the thing with uh, uh, serverless functions, AWS Lambda in general, um, that initial startup time, that cold start time is what really hurts. And that's where snap start came in and allowed us to kind of get rid of that or vastly improve it um, over 10x uh, here on AWS. So if you go into configuration and you go edit here, you can change snap start to publish version, click save, go into versions, create a new version of this, say publish. This is going to take a little time up here. So through the magic of editing, you will not have to wait for that. All right, and that's done. So you can go back over to your function. You can go into test, give it a new value. Let's say, hello, spring cloud function on snap start. And let's go ahead and test that. And <clears throat> that looked like that worked, but uh, we're still seeing an init duration, which means that wasn't using snap start, so I'm not sure what's going on there. If we test it again, it's obviously much faster. Um, so I have to see why snap start wasn't working there, but uh, that really wasn't the point of this video. Anyways, it was really taking advantage of Java 17. I will leave a link to both of the repositories that we covered in this tutorial today. We took a look at how to build a new AWS Lambda function in pure Java. We also took a look at how to build an AWS Lambda function here in Spring Boot using Spring Cloud Function and 
more importantly, Spring Boot 3, Java 17. We are kind of up to date now. This is exciting stuff. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about this. I'm excited to see what you are going to build, what I can build with this, and the future here on AWS. Uh, so, hey, I think that's where we'll leave it today. If you found value in this video, friends, please do me a favor. Go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding. Thank you.